What is up guys and welcome back to this channel. Today I have a pretty interesting video for you guys. Uh, I have actually a recording uh, of a game here between McCleaves and Ul Uthred. Okay, I don't know how to say that, but okay, so McCleaves is playing as the Hausa and Uthred is playing as the Ottomans. So let's just open up the Fog of War. You can see McCleaves here and uh, Ottoman here. So we see the classic opening, uh, we're building the, that granary. And we're gonna look at the deck as soon as we send it in. Now, I don't know exactly what's gonna happen in this game actually. Uh, so it's gonna be quite interesting. We're, we're gonna analyze his strategy here and yeah, we'll just see what happens, I guess. So on this map, there's not a whole lot of TPs. However, there is uh, this TP, of course, which is very safe, which is really nice to Uh This middle TP can be quite hard to contest, but uh, it's definitely possible. Like, I like dropping down a fort on this map. It's actually really good to contain your opponent. There are some fish on this map, but yeah, the fishing runs out quite fast, but it's definitely a good last resort. And I think overall this map is actually quite nice for us. So you can definitely like contain your opponent here, cut them off from this hunt, and then they basically only have these three hunts, uh, which is quite neat. We also see the Jesuits uh, on this map, so we have the Conquistadors. Uh, I doubt we'll see them in this game, but uh, who knows. Um, we also have this gunpowder tech, it's quite expensive though, paying with influence, so yeah, it's just, these techs are just really expensive, uh, at least for house in the beginning, like 500 influence, that's a lot of influence. So, we'll take a look at the deck here, and McLeaf's actually starting with the three villas, his deck is actually called Morocco, so I bet we're gonna see the Morocco age up, and that tells me that it's uh, most likely a FF play, because Morocco gives you that speed to send in more cards and faster get up to age three. So it's a quite standard deck. He does have spice trade here, which I think is quite interesting, especially for a Morocco build. Uh, having spice trade, uh, oh, yeah, it essentially tells you that you're gonna want to stay maybe age two a bit longer. Uh, but we'll see if we see that. We also have this crossing festival, uh, which gives you cattle with varying sizes. I don't see this card a lot actually, and uh, I think it's quite, uh, yeah, it's not that good of a card. Uh, in my opinion, but we'll see if we'll see, see some use in it. Maybe if there's like a longer H2, it could be useful if you're starting running low on cattle. Because you, as you know, in H2, you don't have that tech that uh, lets you get the cattle back, the cow loans. Okay, so we see a, a four villager here from uh, the Ottoman player. I wonder if he's just gonna herd in or if he's actually gonna build a barracks or something. And it actually does look like he's gonna build a barracks, it, it seems like. so. We'll see what it drops down. And here is the age up, up in for Elsa and its Moroccans. So yeah, just like the deck suggested. And this villager is really far forward. He's really trying to take that, uh, that those animals there. And that was actually quite nice. McLeaves doesn't really see this because, well, uh, he shot the one inside there. But yeah, n not as aggressive from uh, McLeaves here. Uh, He's doing quite the standard start here, I would say. He's not walking forward in the bills, and yeah, I doubt he's gonna do much pressure in H2, to be honest, but we could see some interesting stuff. We'll see. Um, do we have a Brax yet? No, no Brax. How is the macro looking? Okay, so the Ottoman player is not gathering a whole lot of wood, so I don't know. Is he going for a Brax? Is, is he not? It's just a, sh a bit shy of 200. And he aged up with the wood. So yeah, uh, I, I bet we're gonna see him drop the barracks now. And he's actually sending the 700 coin. Interesting. But yeah, these villagers just really exposed him. Yeah, okay, there it comes the barrack. Because I was thinking, imagine if uh, McCleaves just goes uh, raiders from the beginning, that could be a really dire situation. But because Ottoman ages up so uh, fast, it's actually, they do actually have a bit of time. So he's actually around both a barracks and another barracks. So he's going double barracks. And yeah, this is a really good play here by McCleaves scouting these barracks. And he can actually see that there are two barracks. So that means that it most likely won't be any Abus guns. Like sometimes you see them go for uh, like a barracks and a artillery foundry. And then you can see grenadiers or Abus guns. But now since there are two barracks, yeah, it's going to be Jan Rush all the way. So... 
I think we're gonna see uh, he's macroing for that H up, and I think he's gonna go for the H up. Now, in this situation, you can actually try to get some Fulanis out. I really like sending the 8 Fulani in this scenario because it's just so damn good against the Janissaries, especially after the last patch with the, with the buff versus heavy infantry. And we see the 700 coin coming in right now. And because he got that extra XP, is actually closing into the next shipment. But yeah, there's just a whole nother level on Ottomans today, like they've already gotten their 700 called out, so yeah, they're just so damn fast. And now they can get full batch, her 10 Janissaries, and this will easily one-shot a villager, so you have to be really careful now. I bet we will actually see him lose a, well, a villager too, yeah. Yeah, you really want to go back. Oh, is this gonna go up? No, it's not. So that's really unfortunate. Now, fortunately for him, he isn't actually housed, but yeah, a bit of a late uh, war camp here. Uh, I guess he realized he needed the building because of the pressure because he is gonna want to just age up Yeah, he's gathering up the coin. So yeah, he just wants to age up as soon as possible right now And I bet we will see the Akan age up because he's gonna need the units and the Akan is uh, Yeah, I think the only age up that actually gives you any uh, uh, Force to take down these Janissaries and there's actually a lot of Janissaries So I wonder if we're gonna see like the seven Fulani or something uh, we'll see what he uses that card, or he just, or he might just save it. So he sold the cat for wood, I guess, and building some more houses. He's aging up with Akan. Now he can't get the uh, uh, faster age up because, yeah, he doesn't have the influence just yet. I wonder if this actually is in range. No, this is probably not in. Yeah, well, it is. Okay, it is actually in range. Just really close there. That's actually quite nice. But yeah, you can see the Ottoman player just taking on all the houses. Now, if I were Ottoman at this point, I probably would just right click the TC, realize that he's trying to age. There's not any units out there and he would probably get it down before he even ages up. But he's committing to destroying all the houses, trying to house, house up. But it doesn't really work because McLeave's just building a ton of houses. <laughs> he's, he's still not pop capped after all of this. And yeah, there's just a lot of Janissaries. I wonder how we're doing on the micro side here of Ottoman. Yeah, actually quite good. He has quite low resources, utilizing his resources sources quite well. Um, the, oh, he actually sent even the food and then he now sent the wood to get some more houses and infrastructure out. Meanwhile, is McLeave's training thing? Okay, so he aged up there, he's sending the Fulani. Now at this point he's already up. I would like to see in, uh, this being sent maybe even uh, earlier, but yeah, I guess it works. So he sent the uh, the Akan from the card, so now we can actually train the Akan as well. Uh, he's quite low on gold though, and uh, yeah, I just won't have the time to get any out from the barracks, but yeah, it's looking quite uh, quite difficult right now. He's, there's a lot of idle time here. He does have the Akan now, and there's actually quite a few, and they have actually really good stats. These are H3 Akans. 213 at hit points, 23 attack uh, versus these uh, Janissaries. So they're just slightly better than the Janissaries, but then they have that area of effect. And you're gonna see that go to work now, I guess. Yeah, so you can see really damaging a lot of Janissaries, but yeah, there's just not a whole lot of them. Meanwhile, he has these uh, Fulanis backing up, and that's actually really nice because these have really good multipliers. 1.75, she actually uh, buffed in the last patch. But he is uh, without a barrack, so he can't really uh, get more units out right now, and he really needs that wood. And he doesn't really have any good wood value as well, he can't use the gold to trade because he doesn't have any gold. So yeah, it's a tough spot here, but at the same time he's up and the score is actually looking really good. So yeah, that, that's quite interesting actually, I wouldn't expect the score to be looking that good. Uh, meanwhile, uh, we can see a artillery foundry dropping down here. I think this is a good play. He's, he uh, recognizes that uh, McCleaves have a lot of infantry. So yeah, some Avus guns would be actually be really good or just some grenadiers would work too. Yeah, there you see he's queuing up a lot of uh, Avus guns. Now we could actually probably have the time to age here as well, just cancel those and age. But yeah, he's going to go for the Avus guns and I think it's, it might actually pay off. But it really depends on uh, if McLeave's gonna add some cav. 
Uh, yeah, he does have the cards. So we have the five Lefidi Knights and the four Lefidi Knights, and this can be really devastating against these uh, Ebus guns. And you also even have the Center Horseman, so that's quite interesting. And I think this is it's always a gamble not to have the Cannoneers, I think, in this type of deck, because if you're up against Ottoman, imagine they doing a fast fortress, sending the Falks straight away. Uh, then it could be quite hard to counter those falconets because the center horseman can have a really hard time just getting uh, getting there but because he chose to Jenser rush we're actually looking in a good spot and the center horseman could actually come in real clutch so there are the abyss guns and looks like Mathis actually wants to commit and take this down he's gonna lose quite a few accounts but yeah that was probably just worth it to keep control of the map but yeah, these Abus, uh, Abus guns are just really uh, dangerous, they have really great range and yeah, they can really just kite you forever. So what is the follow up? He's training some Lafiti, yeah, he's recognizing he needs some cavalry to deal with those Abus gunners. And I bet we're gonna see the 5 Lafiti as the next card probably. He's also adds some houses, he's uh, now far from being housed again, which is really nice. We can see the macro, we got a lot of people on food. Not a lot of villagers though, only 18 villagers. Let's look at the Ottoman player. So the Ottoman player has 22 villagers. So the Ottoman player actually has quite a few more villas and he actually has the larger army at this point. But yeah, it's, it's actually still really close because house has aged and that means they have access to stronger shipments and better scaling. So there are the cavalry. Now these are actually not upgraded yet. So this, these are only H2 Lefidis, but yeah, they're still quite strong. As you can see, they do tank a lot of damage. And I think this is also one of those moments where you wanna start adding some Griot so you can heal up your army between the fights and heal up these tanky cavalry units. Like just making uh, one single Griot can actually be really good. And as I said it, here we can see the five Lefidi coming out. So he wants to get that uh, really nice cavalry mass. He's doing some, uh, trying to do some raiding here. I wonder if you can see any hunts dead here. Hunts here, yeah, he's over here, it seems like. But meanwhile, Ottoman is just applying some pressure and there's just a lot of that stuff here. This is quite a scary mass and yeah, there's not a whole lot my cleaves can do. So he's training the, uh, actually he's training the um, accounts from the native embassy as well. It's just a really nice play to get value from that influence. But now we see. The cavalry is coming in, are they gonna do a good connect or will the Ottoman player switch? Oh, he did a switch. And these cavalry units are just a bit out of range. I would love to see this come at the same time, but is this gonna work? I think it's still looking quite good for Ottoman, but uh, maybe not actually, it's, it's really close. Ah, uh, the Janissaries are actually going down. There's not a whole lot of Janissaries left. There's like three Janissaries left and once they're gone, well, there, it's gonna be easy to pick off the Abbas with those cavalry. And there we see the reinforcing batch of cavalry and yeah, now it's looking really good for McLeese. You can see that reflected in the score. The score is just looking really good. And we have some reinforcements here in the form of Janissaries, but yeah, there's just not enough. And these are gonna die to the Akans and the Fulani. So just a really nice use of the Fulani. I think these Fulani just got a great value considering Ottoman hasn't added any cav. Yeah, these units just give so much value. So we actually have a card available here. I wonder what we're gonna send. Uh, I think he's gonna go for the four uh, Lefidi Knights. That is my guess. But we see the macros are just really food heavy at this point. I guess he could sell a cattle for gold and just pump out a lot of units, but we'll see what he wanna do. He is actually backing off, he doesn't wanna overextend. I wonder if the uh, Ottoman player is close to aging, perhaps he is. No, he's actually quite far from aging and it looks like he's focusing just on getting more ab Abus gunners out. He's actually up here hunting as well. This could be quite easily raided and that, that would definitely be a GG. But yeah, in the meantime, he's actually doing quite fine. But as you can see, the problem with Ottomans is when you're stuck in H, uh, H2 and you have used all your shipments, their eco economy is just quite bad. Like even if he has, has a lot of villagers, he actually has more villagers than Hausa. I bet that Hausa's eco is actually just way better because the gather rate on these guys are so much better with the granary and the market takes and everything. So we have 1.05 food a second, let's see. Wonder what these guys have. Okay, so Ottoman is actually 
just slightly fast to gather it as well. That's that's very interesting actually. And let's look at the gold gather it 66. And what do we have here? 60. Yeah. So. So I would say they're quite similar gather rates, but at the same time you have the livestock pen here and I think you have the ability as how as in H3 to get the H3 upgrades, so yeah, but we'll see that. So quite sizable mass of Akans here, uh, which is quite nice to see. We have some a few Lefidis and the, this shipments just keep getting value, like imagine the value you got from those 7 Fulanis. And it does actually seem like he sent the 9 Fulani as well. So we're just adding a reinforcing batch of those. So here we have a bit of a fight. It's interesting that Ottoman player chooses to do the engage here. I think he could try to stay back and actually age up, but instead he's trying to apply pressure. He doesn't want the house to outscale, and but it's actually looking quite good uh, so far for the Ottoman player. He's managing to kite quite well, and there's not a whole lot. Uh, McLeaves can do at this point. I think he needs more cap to actually stop the, that mass and here he has the extra Lefidi. So imagine actually upgrading these Lefidis to H3 units and those would just be beasts of a unit but we'll, we'll see when that comes in. It's quite expensive, quite a lot of wood you need for that and gold of course and yeah it doesn't really have a lot of wood and gold at this moment. So he keeps training those Akans and will we get a connect now? You can see the armies here, and I think at this point it just looks like the uh, house armies is just a lot stronger, I think. Because these uh, accounts are actually H3 already, and because this, uh, this cavalry units are just so tanky. And you can see he's doing the right thing, he's just moving the cavalry around so that the Janissar is just walking around in melee mode. And he's trying to get a good connect, meanwhile he's tanking damage with the Lefidi knight so that the accounts survive. We can actually see he did lo lose actually a lot of accounts, but at the same time, all, almost all the Janissaries are dead now. And we can see he gets the connect on the Abus Gunners, and yeah, I think this is probably GG. Uh, because there's not a whole lot uh, that Ottoman can do against this, and yeah, at this point the accounts are in range and they will just get huge damage output. So. I think th and this is really the power of the Akan plus cavalry, like the Lefidis. The Lefidis can just go in and snare, they don't have the highest uh, damage output, but because they're so tanky, they will survive and let the Akans get in range. And you can see he's just getting a ton of kills here. Meanwhile, behind this, we're training more Akans, and I wonder what he's gonna send next. He actually sent the wood, interestingly. Yeah, so he has the quartz of wood laying here. I wonder what he will do with that wood. Maybe do the uh, uh, camera upgrade. Although he doesn't have a lot of cavalry, so it isn't really that valuable to do it right now. But I would love to see him drop down some more infrastructure. Maybe you can see a palace or university down here, trying to get some more influence to get the Falks in. But yeah, so now it's uh, the Falks are quite far away. It doesn't look like we're gonna see some Falk action. And interestingly, he didn't uh, send the uh, to tokens of a thousand influence. That could actually be a lot of units. Like, imagine if you have the uh, these Akan that are natives, they're 100 influence. If you send like this shipment, you can actually think of it as uh, a 10 Akan shipment. That's actually pretty darn good. And actually, in my opinion, a lot better than sending like the 9 Fulani. Now, however, it of course depends on the situation. In this case, the Fulani are really good because, well, Ottoman doesn't have any cavalry. So we can see doing some trades here and uh, the Ottoman player is just trying to get that mass up but yeah it's it's struggling, he does have a lot of resource income, he's on 27 villagers, uh, it feels like he's been on 27 villagers for a while or maybe lost some uh, but yeah it's not looking too good. Meanwhile, take a look at Hausa, and now we're at 34 villagers, so uh, now we actually have a quite a big lead for Hausa considering they're also H3 and uh, the fact that McLeaves have all of these cattle, so yeah, at this point it's just looking really good and we can really see that reflected in score. Uh, it does look like he's uh, afraid of overcommitting though, so he doesn't want to go too uh, quickly into the game and I think that's that's fine like he can see uh, as soon as Ottoman's age is up he, he knows that he's just spent all the resources and before, as long as he stays in age 2 uh, then it's quite fine for McLeaves in this point because he knows that he will outboom and he's actually even adding some towns uh, an extra town center here um, meanwhile you can see Ottoman stacking two shipments he doesn't want to send the advanced arsenal he just 
he just doesn't have anything good to send right now and that's just a huge problem and I think that's probably the biggest uh, difficulty here for Ottoman and the biggest reason that McLeod is getting such a head start. And I wonder if he actually did go for the upgrade for Elefidi, we'll see when they pop out. Uh, but he is training some more Elefidis, he's actually doing the selective breathing text so he wants to uh, expand on his cattle. and. Yeah, this is just really nice, uh, including these grills. And you can see the grills just help a lot, and especially versus these high uh, out damage output units like the Ebus Gunners, the grills are just really good because, well, they, well, they can only target one uh, single unit at a time. Uh, this, that means also that the stronger the unit is, the better it is. And we can see the Elafidi come out now. Unfortunately, they're still not upgraded, um, but I think it's gonna be fine because, yeah. The House of Mass looks quite strong at this point, and yeah, we're gonna see uh, Ottoman's gonna get trapped here, I think, and he's not gonna uh, be able to escape, and yeah, this is just looking really good for McLeaves. And here we see the cavalry connecting, and yeah, there's just not a whole lot of Jans here, and we see the Griots. This is just also so nice, the Griots attacking the Janissary that's trying to take down the cavalry, and just makes the cavalry last so much longer, and yeah, this battle was just really one-sided. And that's the GG. So, quite an interesting game there. I think this is just a classic example of the House FF and how useful the accounts actually can be. It's actually quite interesting to see also the uh, Fulani getting in there in the, uh, in the mass actually doing a lot of work in this game. Now it is quite expensive to build uh, the Fulani because they cost wood and you preferably you don't want to uh, chop wood and we can see the McLeaves uh, solve that issue by sending the uh, seventh Fulani and then sending the eight, uh, the ninth Fulani and then also sending that thousand wood ship and that really allowed him to go go for uh, quite a nice uh, Fulani mass without having a lot of people on wood so so that's quite nice. So let's just take a look at the post that is we can see that actually the Ottoman player is actually outgathering McLeaves even, which is quite interesting. So as we can see, McLeaves uh, actually didn't get any uh, villagers out here for an extended period of time, and that really uh, gave Ottoman player a bit of a head start. But then the Ottoman player here losing just a ton of villagers, and that what uh, is what really made the difference. Here you can see on the resource gathered, like you see this huge idle time here, and the, and that that initial attack actually did a lot of damage, but yes, that means that McLeave had to actually shop uh, a lot of wood with his villagers to rebuild the infrastructure. And you can see that just goes really slowly. And if we look at the trades, uh, we also have some really good trades here from McLeaves. And yeah, that's just the fact that he went full Janissary and just didn't have a really great way of dealing with those uh, Fulani archers. Now, the Ebus guns were a good play, but they... Uh, definitely got outplayed by the Lefidi Knights. So what an interesting game and uh, I hope you liked my first cast on this uh, YouTube channel and hopefully there will be a lot more and also special thanks to McLeaves for sending us this uh, recording. It's just really interesting to cast some other games other than myself and uh, yeah I hope you guys enjoyed it. Until next time I'll see you in the next video.